All right, so we are back with the fifth part of the real life scenario based question and answer for manual testers. All right, guys, if you have not seen the part one, part two, part three, part four, right? These are super amazing real time scenario based manual interview question. Probably these are the question which will definitely come up in your next manual testing interview, right? So make sure you are following up. So let's start with the fifth part and amazing, amazing response that you have given for the last four videos. Thanks a lot for that. Let's get started with next almost like nine plus questions that I have basically started. These are very, very scenario based and these are the questions that I generally ask also. And I have seen these are the questions that we have basically put it out from my students also. These kind of questions related to manual testing, people have asked. All right. Let's start with the first one, which is share your approach where you have to test a particular website on a multiple devices, right? Now, what exactly they have wanted to know, no, just pay attention, which is they are looking for something called as cross browser testing, right? They are looking like how you can basically test this web application by using the CVT, right? So make sure that you are basically giving the example for the cross browser testing. That's a super, super important thing. Please pay attention and discuss about that. Okay. If I have to test on a multiple devices, I will go with the technique of cross browser testing where I will create a multiple combination and I will test it out on a cloud services like browser stack, source lab or lambda test, right? I will prepare a checklist. I have shared this checklist also. Probably I will put it into the description also. You can go through that checklist of CVT. What exactly are the things that you need to check on a multiple devices? Multiple, for example, if you are going with the mobile application, then you will have multiple devices, multiple OS, multiple screens. If you are going with the web application, then definitely multiple browsers. Again, like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, you will have multiple OSs, Windows, Linux and Mac. Right? How will you make that? What is the approach that you are going to take that they are looking for? CBT, checklist and any scenarios that you have done in past, right? You can discuss about them. Research. This is the most important point. You have to do a research about that application and see this is one of the things that I have done, which is basically I discussed with the business analyst. So I have to test a particular website, for example, the app.vw.com, right? So what I did is I discussed with a BA or basically whoever is doing the analytics in the company, right? I discussed about it, right? Okay, which OS or operating system this website is is getting the maximum view. So we got this data from the Google Analytics and that's where I paid more attention and I got a recognition also due to this, right? So make sure you research and see your project or a product from where the maximum number of traffic is coming. That's where you have to research and that's where you have to do the multiple devices, right? See, I know all the devices are important, but if you are covering like 90% and 95% by using the Google Analytics, right? Definitely it's a edge, right? So pay attention to that. Next question, which is consider a page where you have a multiple roles and responsibilities, multiple permissions. How will you handle this, right? So see what they are looking for is that you have to create a tabular data here. Any users will have multiple roles or multiple permissions, right? For example, when I was testing the app.vw, right, which is a VW page where they had multiple permissions, right? Multiple permission means you can have a admin, you can have a user, you can have server admin, and there are multiple, multiple roles which are available. So what we did is we prepared a tabular form. So creating a tabular form is always helps whenever we discuss about the roles and permissions. So create a table and figure it out which one is basically valid and which one is not valid in this case. You can create an Excel sheet or a text data or a JSON file, anything that you see. You can't test every combination. That's the point where you cannot test every combination, but try to cover as much as you can. And you can discuss with the product manager which are important scenarios or which are important combinations. This is what you can see. And prepare or you can say pick the samples. Pick sample basically means consider the scenario you have 2000 test cases that you have basically come up with the combinations, right? For example, 10 users, 10 permission, 10 into 10 into something to in like 2000 something. In that case, you what you can do is pick a sample which is super, super important and which can cover the maximum number of bucks or you can say maximum number of test cases. This is what you need to do. So that's where they want to know. So whenever roles and permissions, tabular data and check for the combination, which are super important. Prioritize your basically combination. That's the beauty. That's the important point. Next question where you have login page and a registration page for an appointment. It is a very simple thing where you have to tell about the process. So tell about how will you test it? See what we are looking for in this answer is your estimations, how you are basically doing estimations. If you know about the agile scrum framework, you should know the concept of man hours and other things, right? If you have not done it, there is a free agile training, which is available. I will put the link in the description, which is sdead.live slash agile. Make sure you watch it where I have discussed about how to give the estimates for these kind of projects. This is very, very important for manual testers or freshers, how to give a estimates for a particular project. So make sure you know this. What type of testing you will be doing? You can ask more question, okay, related to your requirements, right? And don't assume anything. Never do this. If you know, figure out the requirements, figure out which are which are the important things 
ask more question from the interviewer who is asking and you should tell them what is the time taken for example it will take two days three days based on the type of testing that you are so make sure you pay attention on this no specific answer to this so these kind of questions they don't have any answers but they are looking for the approach so approach is correct estimation type of testing asking most question and creating a high level requirement time taken telling them in a manners this is the right approach where they are looking for this kind of answer and this is one of the important questions that i have seen many people ask let's consider the next question which is suppose you have a small app but after testing there is a production issues and your qa manager is basically unhappy and is not satisfied with your testing what you will do the very important scenario very real world i have seen this multiple times like two three times and right now because i am handling more than 20 people i also see a couple of folks miss the box right so what is the exact step that you need to do pay attention first of all we all are human so mistakes are mistakes that's fine check for the requirement if you have a test case which is missing if there is a test case missing please add it immediately fill up a rca so sd.live/rca or scrolltest.com/rca is a template free template available download the template and keep it handy you have to file a incident report you have to send a hot fix afterwards but discuss with the developer if there is a hot fix or a small fix required go ahead and do it immediately send a report that this this was the error and this is what we have done and this is a hot fix that we have sent please send this consider this as your own responsibility admit it please admit it that yes we have made some mistake document the process what you have done right you can document your rca assure them this will not happen in the future and please be proactive and don't worry see i have never seen very rarely i have seen people are getting fired because of production box but not taking the responsibility or ignoring the production box actually i have seen people getting fired due to this right so pay attention don't worry calm down focus on the documentation send send the send the hot fix immediately admit your mistake and take care from the next time this is the answer for this now quickly let's discuss about the quick questions quick one liners which is have you rejected any build what was the reason for it see you have to do build reject you have to reject the builds for example even if you are working as a manual tester or uh, even if you are starting out have you ever rejected a build yes i have rejected multiple builds whenever there is a smoke test or a critical functionalities are not working i will immediately reject the build right or if it is a older build we have multiple builds sanity test cases are not, not passing fail the build and just say it is a rejected build immediately tell to the developer no harm don't be shy on this right people are shy i have seen qas are very shy not to reject the build they are keep on testing finding more bugs no reject the build if nothing is working if important critical functionalities are not working immediately reject that build okay that's the beauty that's the important part. developer says that it's not a bug what you have to do properly communicate add logs at a proper bug report include more people right this is more important if you think that yes there is a deviation from requirement then please add the bug and add your qa lead also then they will take actions okay qa lead says that this is work on saturday on sunday right very common question where they will basically push you that okay can you work on saturday can you work on sunday please don't allow them unless it is very very critical release or you are 100% mandatory right don't allow this because i have seen this i have allowed this and there was there are consequences so people expect that yes you will be working on saturday sunday if you allow them so good thing is uh, if you don't allow it initially okay i'm not available i'm going outside this is not possible or if it is too critical then you can think about it but not allowing or saying no is the right answer for this question always don't work on saturday sunday unless and until just super super critical that's the point for you are not confident will you release this build right this is i have seen multiple times you are not confident you have run your test cases but still there are there are bugs and you are confident right make sure you send a email to the stakeholders by talking about this and you can always discuss, discuss with your qa manager and qa leads you can even discuss with a developer that i am not confident i need more time i have seen i have released couple of softwares or you can say projects in a pressure that okay there is a time deadline i have to release this right and i have seen production box so you can you have to let them know you have to let them know this is a super super important thing okay please test this again full regression okay this is one important thing where developer says okay i have fixed this do full regression right ask for the impact area guys ask for the correct impact area you don't have to do full regression every every time right if it is a full regression it means developer is not confident where it is getting impacted so ask from them get your number of test cases low so that it is you don't have to rewrite or redo again and again right you are not a machine which can basically rerun your like hundred of cases again and again so ask them proper impact area and think about it and run only that regression part 
okay that's a super important thing all right so i hope you have learned something new these are the important questions and i will try to come up with the more number of questions how, how was it uh, let me know in the comment which which question was your favorite and if you have anything that you would like to discuss related to real real life scenario based question related to manual testing let me know in the comment uh type part six in the comment if you need more questions right thanks a lot for watching if you are existing subscriber thanks a lot for joining in and if you're new one consider subscribing because i create videos related to software testing test automation and i'm on a mission to help maximum people to switch to software testing right thanks a lot this is your promost i'll see you in the next video